Today I'm interviewing Dr. Dave Dreisinger of the University of British Columbia, who is also a principal of Search Minerals, a Canadian uh, rare earth miner. And I, I note today uh, that you are at SGS Lakefield, and can I ask you what you're doing there to, to give us an update on Search? Yeah, so, so Search has been working with SGS as our, our technology development partner for many years now. And we're doing work on our uh, separation of different minerals at uh, from our different deposits in Labrador at SGS as an enhancement to our overall process for recovery of metals. Okay, I, I have I have to make a comment here that is something I've been thinking about for some time. There's there's a, a rather noticeable difference between the Canadian academic industrial approach to uh, mining and, and that in the U.S. In Canada, uh, the outstanding experts in, in uh, separation science, such as you, <laughs> uh, are, are not only uh, well-known academics, but well-known in the, in the real world of, of, of mining, of, of industry. And we don't have this in the U.S. Canada is outstanding that way. And, and so, um, your companies like Search have a depth of management, technical management, that most of the companies I deal with outside of, of Canada simply don't have. And I am very optimistic about your about Search, about your ability to bring a project to completion and interproduction. Inter so we talked uh, about a month ago, I think. Can you bring us up to date on, on progress, or as you fellows say, progress at search? I sure can. Thank you. So we, we've been doing a lot of exciting things the last little while. Uh, we started uh, back late last year looking at our silver fox deposits. So in Port Hope Simpson, we have Foxtrot, Deep Fox, uh, Silver Fox, Awesome Fox, Fox Meadow, these are all the, the, the current foxes under consideration. Okay. Our geologist uh, likes to name things after foxes. Uh, but at, at Silver Fox, we had a very high occurrence of zirconium and hafnium in the, the deposit, at least in the surface showings, around 6 six or 7% zircon content. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, in, in addition to the rare earth, because a lot of rare earth mines have a co-product that adds value to rare earth uh, deposits, why not look at recovering zirconium and hafnium as a co-product with our rare earths? So we submitted a sample of our surface uh, showing from Silver Fox to SGS and asked them to look at trying to float a zircon material, zircon concentrate out as a byproduct to the rare earth recovery. So what they did was they took the material, they did mineralogy, you know, all the right sort of things at the front end. They found that there was uh, the usual rare earth minerals, alanite and fergusonite, which are found in the other deposits. They found the zircon, of course, which is the, the zirconium and hafnium containing mineral. And then they, they decided that the best way to approach this was to grind the material up, do a magnetic separation at low intensity to recover the magnetite, and then to try to get the rare earths out. They, they looked at it as getting the rare earths out of the way so they could then float the zircon because the zircon and the rare earths tend to float under the same conditions. And so they tested wet high intensity magnetic separation to recover the rare earths and get them out of the way before the zircon. So basically they found the first step, the low intensity magnetic separation recovered magnetite, which could become like a, an iron ore concentrate. The wet high intensity magnetic separation recovered about a 7% rare earth concentrate, whereas the original sample was only about 1%. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the zircon flotation was successful in producing what we think is, is virtually a saleable zircon concentrate. So we looked at that as, you know, number one, a validation of the co-product strategy. But number two, also, we were very amazed to see that we could actually make a 7% rare earth concentrate from the Silver Fox raw material. Historically, we've been uh, sort of wedded to the idea that we would directly extract from the ore the rare earths. But now we have the opportunity to do the recovery from a concentrate rather than from the, the, the whole ore itself. So a big breakthrough on the rare earth part of the component, as well as the add-on to get a zircon recovery. Uh, we've since that time, if I could just, just finish that thought, We've since that time gone to the other three deposits that were most progressed on, which are the, the Foxtrot and the Deep Fox, where we have the 43101 resources, and also the Fox Meadow, and done the same kind of testing and found that we can also get now to around four to five and a half percent 
uh, grade of rare earth concentrate using the wet high intensity magnetic separation. So basically what that says is that our whole back end, our chemical plant that has to extract the rare earths and put them in solution should shrink dramatically based on the fact that we're now dealing with a concentrate rather than the whole ore. So we're very excited about the, the magnetic story, if you will, uh, on, our, on our property that we've been able to, to make this breakthrough in metallurgy. And again, it's with our, our SGS partners here that, uh, that we've been doing all these developments. Uh, can you tell me, uh, is anyone producing zircon commercially in, in Canada today? Uh, not that I'm aware of. It's mostly recovered as a mineral sand. Right. So it's, it's found in the deposits in places like Madagascar and uh, 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 Australia and so on around the world, but never never from a hard rock deposit such as we have here, as far as I know. So where are you on, let's say, target production? When do you expect to actually build out a mine? Yeah, so we're we're building we're building our financial resources to advance quickly. So mm -hmm. we've raised money uh, uh, directly raised money about 1.75 million of hard money and and another 2.5 million in flow through money. Mm -hmm. So the 1.75 is used is going to be used to advance our environmental and do our our engineering work. The 2.5 million is trying to to at least get a a starting uh, amount of material at the measured and indicated. Uh, status in terms of our deposits so we can feed into a bankable feasibility study. So we want to move quickly down the track between where we are now to bankable feasibility. Uh, we're looking at um, trying to get the environmental done in the next year, the bankable feasibility done uh, sometime in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. and then moving into financing and production after that. So we're, we, we see that time is now for the mm -hmm. rares, that, that the out of, out of China supply chain is being formed now. We want to be part of that uh, development, and so we want to accelerate our plans to, to take advantage of the opportunity. We, we've got uh, USA Rares as a, a major investor now in the company that came into the 1.75 placement. We have mm -hmm. a technology collaboration with them where they have some separation technology in the in the ion exchange world that we're going to evaluate alongside of, of the conventional solvent extraction and the other technologies that we've been looking at. So we have the all the pieces being built very quickly towards um, advancing to production. Thank you. Uh, today I was speaking with Dr. David Dreisinger and about his his work with Search Minerals. We're getting an update and I think we're going to be looking for some more updates in the very near future. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me today.